And tonight's act, you, have, you, you will not believe this. This is something that, if you haven't heard it before, it's going to change the way you listen to music, and I guarantee that.
Well, I think it was a lot of sources and influences. You know, it started early with Django Reinhardt, personally, his guitar, guitaristically, you know, Wes Montgomery, Tell Farlow, Jim Hall, everybody, Charlie Parker, Ch John Coltrane, just listening a lot to everybody and just trying to remember what you can remember, hear what you can hear, and play what you can play. You know, no one's going to get it all, so you just kind of get whatever you can and try to make your style out of it. Your style and your technique are more or less the same thing. You don't practice technique and then all of a sudden you have your style. It's kind of goes hand in hand. So I started early trying to play this music. And believe me, I'm still working on it. It takes around 14 lifetimes and I don't even believe in reincarnation. Well, I don't think it's planned right then and there. You know, you do some practicing to try to remember your licks and you have some things worked out so that you know where you're going. And, but hopefully when you get ready to play, it's a little bit different, so it doesn't sound like you've been practicing it. It's not supposed to be planned, but don't believe that. A lot of it is. We know what we're going to play, you know. It's like you use the same colors all the time. You just kind of put them in different places, hopefully. If you're lucky, if you're having a good day. There's no such point. Don't believe that. That doesn't exist. A lot of a lot of a lot of people would tell you, "Oh, you're supposed to play everything you hear." That's impossible, man. If I ever played what I heard, the whole planet would move. <laughs> It'd move to another planet. It can't it can't work. It doesn't work that way. I'll tell you why because I feel that your intuition is much quicker than your intellect. And you know, if you start thinking about what you're hearing and what you're going to play, you don't have enough time for all that. It's like a touch thing, you know, it's a feeling thing. You have to, uh, as you play it, you know what it is. You know, there's education in these fingers, in this body, and somehow it comes out. It's not easy to explain because if you could explain it, you could probably make $15 billion dollars because no one can explain it. I've talked to head shrinkers medicine men, doctors, lawyers, Indian chief, nobody knows how it works. Nobody really knows how it works, folks. Just be happy if you got it. And if you don't, you know, maybe you should, should have taken your mother's advice and been a lawyer or a doctor or something. You know, don't feel too bad. You know. It's a hard thing to pinpoint creativity. I mean, we can talk about it, but it's not always something that's exact. So no, I don't always hear everything in my head. Sometimes my fingers go to the strangest places and I'm saying, wow, I'm happy. It feels good that, it, that they went there, but you know, it's not always, not always a, um, a head thing. No, I think you'd probably come up with something different, that's all. You probably would play your rock and probably play jazz and probably come up with rock jazz or jazz rock or as rock or something, you know. You know, it's difficult to say what you're going to come up with. I think you should just absorb as much music as you can and let, let your, let your inner, inner, inner uh, feelings tell you where to go. And they will. And it doesn't have to be what's been played before. It could be what you're doing. That's, that's fine. It doesn't have to be what's gone down before. In fact, it's better when you do it your way. I mean, all the people that you probably love and admire probably did it their own way, even though they were influenced at one time by other people. So I suggest that you follow your heart right away. I mean, don't say, oh, wait a minute, maybe that's not so good because I'm not sure or, or he, someone else doesn't do it. No, go for it right away. Don't waste any time. Now's the time. How much time do we have? Let's face it. It's half over for me, at least. I don't, I don't plan it. You know. I just try to let it happen. Although I think it's a very good... The, the question was uh, something to the effect of uh, the polyrhythmic... Rhythmic? Okay, th that's different than polytonal. The polyrhythmical effect... Uh, Trying to listen to a lot of people who play rhythmically, uh, drums and, and people who have very good conception of syncopation. L let me make one thing clear. You don't do so much thinking when you're playing. You might do a lot of thinking before you're playing, like when you're practicing or when you go home, you know, you think about what you did and you try to, uh, try to smooth it out in your head so that it works for you. But when you're playing, you're just trying to let it happen right then and there, whatever comes into your mind. You're always prepared for what you're going to play, more or less. So I'm, I'm studying some drum books and listening to rhythms and trying to sing my own rhythms and try to make my own music and my own rhythms, and hopefully they come out when I play. Uh, it's something that, once again, you don't think about right then and there, but you kind of plan before. 
You see, there's a lot of absorbing going on in music, whether you know it or not. I, I mean, it's not all practicing. It's not all instrument. You, I mean, half of the time should be practice, uh, should, should be listening. You should be listening to people play. I mean, if, with me, it's been listening all my life. Half of the time, I'm not even practicing. I'm just listening. And by listening, you know, you get ideas. And hopefully those ideas will come out when you're playing or similar. Something similar, to, uh, you're trying to imitate, maybe not exactly, but you get the flavor of it. You see, it's like copying a painting. You can never copy it perfectly, but at least you get the flavor of it. You know, you, you learn something from the experience. <laughs> Actually, I only, I only had one guitar for about 40 years, so I've just recently got a couple other ones, and I don't even play them hardly. But yeah, Gibson. It's a pretty good instrument. I, I can't sing in tune. I don't know why. Even if I sing a regular song, it won't come out right. Now I should be discouraged and quit, you know. But I'm not. I don't care. It's better when you sing it out of tune, you know. Then you have poly, something poly going. What's in tune <laughs> and what's out of tune, you see. You got to make the best of it. The, laugh at it. If you, if you get too serious about this, you're going to be in deep trouble. That's why I have all this gray in this beard. I got too serious. But now I know. I should have known it 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Well, let me tell you uh, first how I got to, uh, to 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 play solo. It got to the place where I uh, no offense, Theo, but I got, I got tired playing with the piano because it was kind of running all over me at every every time. So I decided to play with the trio. Then I noticed that the drums would run all over me, and I started to play with the bass. Then it, the bass kind of ran all over me. So I said, Jesus, man, maybe I should start playing all by myself. Then I found out that it wasn't that good at playing all by myself, so I would force myself into positions, into gigs, to play all by myself over and over again until I could, could do it decently. And, uh, but that doesn't really answer your question. Your question is, is the artist that I like to play with. I mean, it's a hard question because anybody who plays good is, is fun to play with. And if, they, if, they're, if you can somehow have a rapport with these people, that would be even better when it happens, yeah. Go ahead. Um, what I wanted to know is, um, do you prefer like, playing with the piano now over playing with just drums or playing with bass? Or does it matter? I prefer to play for my wife on the side of the bed, but you know, I have to <laughs> come up. Thank you. As I get older, it's harder for me to make the, the trips on the highway to go out and play. You know, oh, Jesus, what time does it start? 8 o'clock, it's way past my bedtime, you know. <laughs> No, I like it. <laughs> I don't know. Today I'm a little foggy. I'm sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, do you ever listen to any music outside of jazz? You do. Oh, boy. Well, I like the Indian music, Rabbi Shankar and those people. I like uh, classical music, all guitar, class, cl classical guitar, you know. And then, of course, I like uh, all the heavyweights like Stravinsky and Bartok and people like that. A lot of Ravel. Yeah, uh, this is Rachmaninoff, Rocky. You know. I just keep collecting music as I go in the music store. Tower Records or something like that. I got to take, either I have to take a couple of hundred bucks or take ten bucks, one or the two, because it'll all go one way or the other. So many good, so much good stuff. I just keep collecting and listening, keep listening and collecting. The question was, should you think about your physical condition? And I'm beginning to think about it now, you know, as... Uh, I didn't care. In fact, I didn't think about it at all for about 40 years, maybe longer, you know. But now as I get a little bit older, I think it's time to lighten up on some of the things, you know, maybe too much pasta. Somebody's, somebody just mistook me for Tommy Tedesco, so I know I got to go on a diet. No offense, Tommy. Although I took eating lessons from him for a little while, so... That's the best way to do it, well, just interact. Because if you play roles, you kind of fall into the same old grooves all the time. In fact, when we started this, the thing we discussed, let's not try to uh, play the roles. And it's very difficult to play with the piano because it's, harmo it's a harmonic instrument like the guitar is. So if I play a chord and he plays a chord, chances are it's going to clash. And you want to try to get above that without you know, placing too much, too much heavy harmony 
at one time. Of course, you can't avoid it, but still in all, if you c keep that in mind, at least you can uh, maybe alleviate it a little bit. You know, I like it when we're yeah, both, both I just, playing. Joe, I just want to also add to that question. It, it, like he was saying about the harmonies clashing a lot, but if you keep everything moving, you know, and then the music becomes linear, you know, it doesn't stay static. So even if the harmonies clash at one point, as long as you keep this thing moving and you're listening to each other, hopefully it will resolve into something at some point, you know. But, and the main thing is like to keep the groove happening. You gotta keep the groove happening the whole time, even if it's just the two of us. It takes time to learn the groove. One of the things, that's expected of a lot of young people. They say, oh man, this guy doesn't have good time or this gal doesn't have good time. You don't get that right away. That takes time. You have to play a lot, you have to listen a lot, you have to feel a lot. Uh, and, and then it starts to begin to, to sink in. But in, sometimes in the beginning, you're not sure how it is. It's like anything else, it's learned. Some people are born with it, but don't believe it. It's not, it's not there because it's supposed to be there. It's something that you learn. We're going to carry on now with uh, Round Midnight. <laughs>
Thank you very much, everybody.